DFG Science TV. Discrete optimizes. Many roads lead to the destination. How math simplifies our daily life. Mathematics has many different faces, but we have yet to see the true face of mathematics. Theory. You see, mathematicians spend most of their time busy working on theoretical problems, not in steelworks or on the Kiel Canal. Oh, look, this is interesting. Generalized polymatroids. And what use are they? Oh, Frank, don't keep asking what use maths is. Sometimes mathematics is simply beautiful. There are loads of unsolved problems and we're looking for the answers. It's gripping stuff. The beautiful thing about mathematics, although it can also be a drawback sometimes too, is that you can do it anywhere. And sometimes our discrete optimizers really are like we imagine mathematicians, spending all day pondering tricky problems. But don't get the wrong idea and imagine that we'd really spend all day writing on Windows. Okay, jetzt Schluss mit lustig. Jetzt erklären wir doch noch mal das Problem. We would like to choose a set of rectangles. If we choose, for instance, this rectangle, we must not choose any other which can be seen by this one. Look here, this one can be seen vertically, so we cannot choose it. This one can be seen horizontally, so we cannot choose it. But this one is not seen, so we are allowed to choose it. And in general, of course, we have more than four rectangles. Okay, and it's the goal to choose as many rectangles as possible which do not see each other. That's right. What is it that fascinates mathematicians so much about theory, about thinking? The relationship between theory and practice is reciprocal. Just like practical problems can sometimes lead to beautiful theoretical problems, theoretical findings are often helpful for practical applications. They provide the spark of inspiration for an algorithm. The beautiful thing about theory is that you can investigate problems that you really find interesting and fascinating. They don't necessarily need to have a direct practical application. Perhaps they will turn out to be of practical use a hundred years from now, or perhaps not, or perhaps they will be important for other theoretical findings. In many other sciences, it's generally the case that the findings are based on observation and experiments, and that you can never be certain that new research won't suddenly disprove and completely overturn prior thinking. We mathematicians, on the other hand, prove statements and arrive at a so-called theorem, which then remains valid forever. A mathematical proof is a very special method of argumentation. This is especially due to the fact that every crucial point, in other words, the assumptions and each individual step of the argument, are based only on other building blocks that have already been proven in the past. The end result that you're aiming to achieve is based on lots of other arguments, each of which, in turn, is based on others. Here we've already got a whole heap of arguments. If we can now find the last one that's still missing, then we'll have finished the house of cards. And if not, then we have nothing at all. It can often take a long time to even come up with a single argument though. You start the day with a blank sheet of paper and it's still blank by evening. Creativity can't just be switched on. As a mathematician, you need quite a high tolerance for frustration. If you find errors in your proofs, then you have to have quite a thick skin. But on the other hand, if it goes well, then it's real fun and you can get really into it. Yesterday I went over our proof once more. I think we've missed a point. The essential argument is wrong. Back to square one. But our mathematicians don't give up. They take another look to see if there isn't some other way to build their house of cards instead. Because perseverance is one of their strengths. Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.